Well, a very good morning to you, or should I say good afternoon, it's actually 25 to 1 in the afternoon here, Sunday the 26th of February, and thanks for clicking on to today's edition of Vogan's Views on Europe, and uh, I made a statement actually last night on Facebook saying about the weather being uh, somewhat boring, and I think I think a couple of years maybe misconstrued my, my meaning of the word boring, it probably isn't a boring pattern in, in fact folks. Um, but I think where I'm coming from at the moment is we have got a pretty, you know, a benign pattern, so to speak, and, and I'll give you my reason for that. I think it's we're neither here nor there in terms of the weather. You know, at this time of year, you would expect uh, a more vibrant atmosphere, uh, you know, perhaps some storms, certainly colder weather than what we're seeing at the moment. And I think for as a forecaster, uh, you know, uh, from my own perspective, it's difficult sometimes to each day write about the weather uh, here in the UK sometimes because the weather isn't really doing anything at all. And uh, for you as a, a viewer, it, it's I'm trying to make it interest and I'm trying to make it less repetitive. So each and every day isn't the same, basically, um, because you do tend to lose viewers. You, you lose people's interest when it's the same thing day in and day out. So I guess I'm looking for a little bit of a, a change in the weather, something kind of more interesting to talk about. But certainly, yeah, it isn't boring in the sense that, you know, we're seeing remarkably mild conditions. You know, the, the weather that we're seeing at the moment is really more indicative, I think, of the latter part of April as opposed to the latter part of February. And uh, certainly over the next seven days, I don't really see much change. However, I do see the ECMWF starting to show signs of a trough trying to move in off the Atlantic by the latter part of next weekend. So but perhaps Saturday into Sunday, it looks as if um, you know the models are trying to depict some cooler weather moving in. Nothing substantial, nothing really to write home about at the moment. But certainly if we do see that change, I'll keep you up to date and I'll try and uh, keep you uh, notified plenty of, uh, plenty of time ahead of ahead of time so to speak but certainly we've got another very mild uh, next few days we've got another uh, rebound of the azores high so to speak we had a bit of a fl uh, flattening out of it over the weekend cooler temperatures but yeah temperatures are still above normal we're seeing temperatures up as high as 13 perhaps even 14 degrees that is well above normal the normal uh, even across the south of england is probably around nine celsius at the moment so it's very very mild we're seeing like I say, the persistency, that kind of uh, benign sort of pattern sense that we're seeing wet conditions person uh, intermittently, uh, I've done well to get that, uh, across Ireland, Northern Ireland and over Scotland as well. Always that precipitation petering out as it reaches the East Coast as well. But the high pressure itself, those heights in the upper levels are just too strong to bring that moisture down into the south of England. Folks, I urge you not to jump too much into this drought at the moment. Things can change over the next couple of months, so let's not jump into the idea of having another summer of 76. Very dry conditions, very hot conditions. I, I would hold off and jump into the extreme. Now, 76 was an extreme event, and I'm not saying that that might not happen, but we need to watch that we, don't, we didn't uh, kind of jump earlier on in the winter, saying that we're going to have a winter like 47 or 46, should I say, or 47, I can't remember, I wasn't there uh, back then, but certainly it was a very extreme event in the UK. Let's not jump too quickly into thinking this is going to be a summer of 76. If we get a series of wet systems into the, uh, in the central and southern parts of England, then you d dent that drought, and our weather can change. But like I said in yesterday's video, if we don't get that, then we could start looking to some of those years going by where you get that very tightly packed relationship between the drought and very warm temperatures. And yeah, I've got my forecast on the 31st of March. I will be uh, honing in uh, as well as that. We've also got the Olympics uh, this summer in the UK. I'm going to try my best to focus on Olympic events forecast what the weather is going to be doing for that as well so i'm going to have a busy summer for sure but let's have a quick look off the uh, ecmwf let's have a quick look at the next few days and you can see here this is upper level chart for sunday the 26th the heights 
start um, lower. They've been deflected down to the south. But what you'll notice here, folks, and you'll you'll have been picking this up if you've been paying attention to the videos, and as well as that, the weather in general. You notice here that you get these wee uh, reductions in heights over the the UK, cooler temperatures. But you notice here, and we've seen this all winter long, that ridge of high pressure has been pushed back. It doesn't take much for the ridge to then revert back over the UK, bringing abnormally warm conditions. Looking ahead at Monday, you can see here, the models have been persistent about this here. Nothing substantial over the UK, but if you notice this little parcel of very warm air on the underside of this jet, strong jet stream, look at how it, it, close together the, the contrast between the greens and the yellows and even some of those oranges are. That would indicate a very strong uh, jet stream blown across the Atlantic Ocean by Tuesday. There's the high pressure back in control. Like I'm saying to you, if I skip back, you see here quite clearly what I'm talking about. It, it bounces, it, it drops back to the south again, and it doesn't take much. By Tuesday, we've got that high back over. And look at how the oranges are showing up across the northern half of the UK. Could we be seeing 17 perhaps on Sunday, on Tuesday? across Scotland, that is a possibility, especially to the lee of the, uh, the Grampian Mountains. You get those southwesterly winds blowing over the mountains on the on the other side of those hills, perhaps into such places as uh, Braemar, uh, Aboyne, even into Aberdeen as well. You've got those downslope winds can increase the warming effect by Wednesday. The high pressure, the core of that high pressure is now to the southeast of London. That will p pull the winds out of the southwest. And of course, that is what I'm looking for. If you look at here, this is that was Tuesday uh, or Wednesday, should I say, Skipping ahead at the, the surface chart of the ECM, the, sorry, I'm getting mixed up in my models now. This is the GFS. Uh, sorry about that, folks. If you notice here, the winds are bending round from the southwest. So as, as important as it is to have the upper level winds of the southwest, you, what you're looking for for maximum uh, ability for the atmosphere to warm, you've also got southwesterly winds blowing at the surface. Now, not so much perhaps uh, over the south of England. The reason being is the heights are stronger here. You might find that it, it's more up across Scotland. You've got those southwesterly winds. But I think it'll be interesting to see how warm we can get Tuesday and Wednesday over the UK. Could we be taking a run at the record for February? Yeah, that's a possibility at the moment. Um, but I'm, uh, I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent sure that we're going to see just as warm uh, as perhaps say uh, the eighteen point seven. But you know, we'll wait and see here. I'm going to try and give you an up to date um, forecast for the conditions tomorrow for Tuesday and Wednesday. But certainly, we have got a lot of interesting things to look at, folks. And uh, you know, like I said to you, we should be. These are conditions that we should be seeing in the latter part of April. Now, does that mean to say we've got a warm spring ahead? Not necessarily. We've still got 30 days, a full 30 days of March to go. I consider March the final month that can produce winter-like weather. And yes, we've got a trough pushing into the UK by the looks of the GA, this ACMWF by next weekend. We'll wait and see how much uh, colder that can bring in. But uh, certainly at the moment, it's a reasonably benign pattern and uh, I'm going to try and keep you up to date as much as possible. Uh, as for, um, you'll notice on the Facebook page as well, I'm actually making up a video of uh, my Facebook fans' uh, top winter for uh, for photos, and I'm going to try and uh, get them uploaded in that video, a special video that I'm going to release at the end of March, if not early April. So I encourage you to check out the Facebook page and, and sift through some of your winter fo photos and upload them to the page and I'm going to try and get them onto the video for you. So if you include your name, if you haven't necessarily taken the photograph, I encourage you to uh, write the name of the person who took the picture and I can credit them as well as the name of the town and country that you live in as well. And we can try and get that uploaded at the end of uh, March. Hope you have a great day folks. Bye for now.